Once again, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Caesars Tahoe in beautiful Lake Tahoe, Nevada. Cedric Kushner Promotions, in association with Corona Extra, present the heavyweight explosion. Today's bouts have been sanctioned by the Nevada Athletic Commission Executive Director Mark Ratner, Chairman Dr. James Nave, and Commissioners at ringside Dr. Elias Gonham, Crispin Rivera, Luther Mack, and Nat Caraselli. Physicians at ringside Dr. Craig Hugmanson and James McLennan. Timekeepers, John Rogers and Steve Menzel. And from the USBA, Supervisor Dan Jones. And our matchmaker for today's bouts, Bill Benton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from beautiful Lake Tahoe, Nevada, 12 rounds of boxing for the USBA Heavyweight Championship. Your judges for this bout are Burt Clements, Keith McDaniels, and Doug Tucker. Your referee, his honor, Mr. Mills Lane. And now, fighting out of the blue corner, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, weighing in at 232 pounds. This fighter's record is 12-1-1 one, one with six KOs and is wearing red and white trunks. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Lyle McDowell. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our champion fighting out of the red corner from Grand Rapids, Michigan. He is undefeated as a, as a professional with 15 victories, three by way of KO. This fighter weighed in at 224 pounds and is wearing black trunks. Ladies and gentlemen, the USBA heavyweight champion, Buster Mathis, Jr. Your referee, Mills Lane, for the instructions. All right, we've already gone through the instructions. The right here is gonna be all right. Right here is gonna be all right. Expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any question from the challenger? Any question from the challenger? Let's get it on. Tell the tape quickly, as you see, a two-inch reach advantage for Lyle McDowell. He is a couple inches taller and weight just about eight. No standing eight count, three knockdown rules in effect. Ten point must system, and of course you can save by the bell only in the last round, and only Mills Lane will be stopping this fight if indeed it must be stopped. Round number one, scheduled for 12, USBA Heavyweight Championship. Buster Mathis Jr. and Lyle Iceman McDowell, center ring at Caesars Tahoe. And that's just where Lyle McDowell would like to spend this afternoon, right in the center of the ring with Buster Mathis Jr. He doesn't, he doesn't want to have his back to the ropes, which is just where Buster wants to have him. Buster's going to feel him out here for about 30 seconds and then just press him. That's what he does. He works his way in with a jab and he works that body. He's not a big puncher, but he gets the job done. He's very busy. Buster Mathis coming off a 10-round uh, decision over Michael Fa Faulkner back in October. First, and Lyle McDowell fighting most recently on August 31st, taking out the omnipresent Keith Sir Jabalot McKnight. Yeah, this is the range that McDowell wants to be. He don't want to be on the inside. He wants to be able to get that right jab mm -hmm. out there and touch Buster with it and then drop that straight left hand in on that's the That's his bill of fare here today. That's what he'd love to do. He's a nice boxer, moves around, got good balance. Buster's going to try to shorten up that distance and work on the inside. That's his office. Down out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Fighting for the uh, second time here in the state of Nevada. Rolls in. By the way, he is hoping today will be an early birthday present. He turns 25 on Sunday. So he said the uh, win today would certainly make the birthday party go a little easier. Yes, fighters coming out of Milwaukee recently. Uh, Jim Mates. Gerald McClellan, the WBC middleweight champion of the world. Terrific puncher. One of the more exciting fighters in the sport today. Now, went a little south with a left uppercut to the body. But here, this is where they want Buster in there working. You hear his corner telling him. Pressure, pressure. Trying to get inside. Nice move by McDowell to pivot out. Lyle says he likes his overhand left uh, as far as being the power punch. Six knockouts and 12 wins. You see Mathis trying to get inside, work the body, just keep his nose on the chest and pressure, pressure, as Bob mentioned. Mills Lane stepping in. Certainly one of the most uh, renowned referees in the sport today. Mills always does a good job, even if you do notice him every once in a while. Good straight left hand by McDowell. No damage. 
Heisman is kind of flipping that right hand out there. And of round number one, Mathis McDowell for the USBA Heavyweight Championship. Very uh, evenly matched round. McDowell had some, uh, certainly some nice movement in there. Yeah, I get McDowell the first round based on the fact that, you know, he did, all, he did what he wanted to do. He stayed out at, at that jab link from Buster and never really, really let Buster get on the inside and work. But if Buster's ever had any problem, it was in the early rounds of these fights where he's, you know, establishing himself and, mm -hmm. and uh, getting comfortable with his opponent. All right. Okay. He's Nelson Hernandez in there giving advice to his fighter. Just remain standing in between rounds. Your thoughts on that? Don't like it at all. I, mean, I think the guy should, should take advantage of every minute of rest that he's allowed to have, and, and that these guys stand up early, and then, you know, at the end of the fight, they have to sit down because they're tired. I think it gives their opponent a, an advantage in seeing that he's made them have to sit down. Round two scheduled for 12, and looks like Buster Mathis uh, got a little... Uh, Go, go, Juice there in the uh, corner between the first and second rounds and trying to pressure right off the bat. It's, you know, it's hard when a guy like Buster gets on you like this because this is his fight. He's used to being in here, mm -hmm. and, and you're not, you know. You're not used to fighting on there. There's no room to punch for McDonald. You know, he can't get any leverage on his punches or his Buster's in there working. And, uh, you know, you see McDowell trying to land a sweeping uppercut, but there's just, there's just no room yeah. to land those punches. And, Buster shows little, little short, compact punches and gets the job done with him there. McDowell tries the arching overhand left hand, but it didn't work that time. But this is just, you know, to train for this pressure, you know, you got to get a, a prototype Mathis to, right. to work you like this. Actually, you got to get two or three of them, and when one gets tired, you got to let the other one in there because he's used to this. You know, Good Buster's exchange. This. Good exchange. McDowell landed his own punch after Buster got off a two-punch combination, but this is where Buster, there you see again, he doesn't knock guys out with those shots, but he, he works his head from side to side, he pulls it out, and the, the point that, you know, where his head was, it leaves an open spot, and he lands right on it, so he's constantly bending at the knees and keeping his hands busy. He's a hard guy to beat in there. That uh, McDowell camp told me that they knew exactly what to expect. In fact, he said he dips and doodles much like a Joe Frazier used to. Stays low, keeps good, good, good head movement, hard to hit. And uh, nice overhand right as he's uh, looking far more impressive this round than he did in round number one. Yeah, no, he, he is. Buster is, like I said, the first round, he, you know, sometimes he just he goes out and does it all for 12 rounds. But in this fight, it looked like he gave Took the first round out, seeing what McDowell was going to try to do. These guys are very familiar with each other. They fought in the amateurs, and mm -hmm. they're from the same region of the country. They've seen each other fight a bunch of times. And but here, this is there's no distance between the two of them. This is Buster Mathis's office. In the first round, we saw McDowell, you know, with the on the outside with his right jab out there. That that's where he wants to fight this fight. But he's fighting Mathis's fight at least uh, so far in round number two. And uh, as you said, Mathis, uh, an excellent in fighter. Gets a lot of shots off. They don't not as clean as, as you'd like to see, but they're still points. And he keeps the pressure. And I think he just wears these other guys down. He wears them down, and, and one thing is going to be very significant. Buster's been up here for several weeks. Up Good here point. 6,700 feet, and McDowell's been here for three or four days. And that, it, it weighs not only on your lungs, on your body, but it weighs on your mind. Fighters, they start thinking, God, you know, I'm tired. You know, my lips are burning, my lungs are burning. God, this altitude up here is something. And whether they never heard the word before, but they know. Round number two coming to a close, Mathis McDowell. As you said, uh, Lyle McDowell has never been past the seventh round, and Buster Mathis has been there Oh, boy, he's uh, 10 rounds, uh, okay, plus 10 rounds, water. seven times. So he's a guy who almost psychologically feels that when this thing goes deep uh, into the fight, uh, he will have uh, not just a physical advantage, but as you mentioned, Bob, that, that mental right. that mental uh, advantage as well. And look at McDowell right now. With his, he's sitting down now. He's huffing and puffing. He's got his arms up on the ropes. His trainers just pulled him up. What you want is just like you see Buster Mathis Jr., your two gloves in your lap, you know, not... Ladies and gentlemen, that is Eric Suffer ropes with the lap the gas is building up in there. So, uh, you know, a, a small set-piece battle is being won by Buster Mathis Jr. early in this fight. 
Nelson Hernandez uh, doing the doing the talk between rounds two and three. Round number three, Mills Lane is your referee. Buster Mathis in the black trunks, Lyle McDowell in the red with the white. And a uh, good round for Buster Mathis, round number two, as he's turning the, the pressure style into a more successful uh, attack in round number two. Uh, he's, you know, Buster's into the flow of what he, he wants to do now. He gets very low and he bends and McDowell, you know, he's really, you know, he's gotta, he's gotta try to make something happen. He cannot sit. Uh, so many times we see Buster Mathis in the Terrell Dicks fight, the various, you know, good wins that he's had, Levi Phillips, he, he wears them down, he gets them into, you know, where they're comfortable laying in there with him, and that's his office, and you can't fight him from in there, you know, you can't get any leverage there. He had a little bit of leverage, McDowell, he threw a couple of nice combinations, but in here, this is Buster's office, and he's getting his work done, not big punches, not hurting the guy, but taking him completely out of his game plan there and, and doing what he wants to do. We mentioned uh, Buster Mathis Jr. record after some good, excellent fighter. Nice straight right hand where he got some room on it. Really, McDowell is a, seems to be a little bit wobbly right now. He's, he's not only wobbly, but all this pressure is going to make pick up his heart rate and his lungs are going to start burning. And Buster Mathis Jr. brings this on every minute of the fight. So McDowell is going to have to make some changes here, or this is going to be a long afternoon for him. Buster Mathis Jr., as he said, plus 10 rounds seven times in a very short career. But uh, McDowell, you pointed out between rounds two and three, was a uh, sucking air with the legs outstretched and the hands by the side, and certainly has done nothing to change the uh, the ebb and flow of this fight here. Right. I mean, he, he stood up in the first round and showed a lot of confidence, and by the end of the second round, he was sitting there with his hands up on the ropes, <laughs> sucking wind. You know, that's the kind of a psychological advantage oh. you don't want to give your opponent. Now, those aren't killer punches by Buster, but I promise you something, mm -hmm. McDowell's in a lot of trouble. The, I mean, it's combinations of punches by Mathis. He does not let you rest. He does not let you breathe. He's in there working upstairs, downstairs, and Buster Mathis is in there having fun right now. Just punching away at Will. McDowell has not thrown a punch for the last minute or so. He doesn't have any room. He doesn't, and he's not going to get any. Mills not Lane looking any. very closely at Lyle McDowell. As you said, those aren't power punches, but they're just but that cumulative effect that after a while they're just going to chop him down like a big O. That's right. That's right. And this is Buster Mathis at his finest. You've seen him turn, turn a left hook into a left uppercut in mid, mid flight. Excellent work by Buster Mathis Jr. And this is a great USBA title defense. Of course, it's not over by any means, but he looks, looks the goods right now, you. We got uh, about 10 seconds going round number three. A huge round for the champion. Everything going right for Buster Mathis Jr. from Caesars Tahoe. A little extracurricular activity by Buster Mathis Jr. One for the uh, the folks back home, maybe one for Dad back in Michigan. Look at the, where uh, Lyle McDowell's arms are oh. up on those up up there on the top rope. They're cutting off his circulation. Every other thing, Buster's right in his right in his lap where they're supposed to. Let's hear it for Cindy. You know something? I, I've seen Buster on, on television a couple times, and this is the first time I think I've seen him up close. But you really can't. Uh, have garner any sort of appreciation for a fighter like him until you see him like this. I mean, here's Buster clean and house on Lyle McDowell, and this, you know, could have easily been a 10-8 round, even, even without the knockdown. You know, Lyle McDowell threw a half a dozen punches in this fight, and you see him there, he's just getting painted by Buster Mathis Jr. And business as usual. Big, big round. We saw the uh, the absolute very best at Buster Mathis in round number three, and he comes out smoking in round number four. Lala McDowell, I think, is going to maybe make one of his final stands here to try to get well, some momentum back know, in his fight. The thing of it is, is he'd be much better off trying to trying to make something happen here than just settling back <laughs> and trying to absorb this beating because he can't absorb this what he's getting from Buster Mathis Jr. here much longer. His legs are going to betray him. 
But Buster Mathis Jr. is, uh, as we said, age 24. Actually, one time weighed over 300 pounds. Yeah. So he dropped about 100 to, to, to be a professional boxer. And he, you know, Buster will never be body beautiful. You know, I'll get out of here. Before and it, he's worked so hard, but you know, he's like a poster child. I mean, he's not. He's never going to be Charles Atlas looking. And that's yeah. that's what a lot of people love about heavyweight. See a guy chiseled in stone with a, a wow. build like Adonis. But you know what, you guys, there's a guy with a heart. Lyle McDowell. So much determination. Lyle McDowell. He is hurt. What's on? There he goes down. Big right hand by Buster Mathis Jr. Chopping down the oak tree at Lake Tahoe. I don't they know. He can't punch. Lyle McDowell getting up. Mills Lane going to take a real close look. We still got a minute 40 to go here in and round number go. four. It won't go because it's going to end right now. As a matter of fact, McDowell's people are looking like they might want to stop the fight themselves. Buster Mathis keeping that pressure on. Buster Mathis Jr. What? Mills Lane, Mills Lane looking real, real close. Longer. Real close. And this is Buster, you know. He, he knows how to work under these circumstances. McDowell's people are telling him hey, he's, tired. <laughs> he's tired. He is definitely backpedaling again, and Buster just keeps the pressure on. Buster Mathis Jr. is doing a number on Lyle McDowell. Oh, that body shot. Mills Lane taking a very, very close look right now. What's holding up Lyle McDowell? We're not real sure. He's leaning on yeah. Buster right now. Yeah, he's badly hurt. And the eyes are glassy yeah. against the ropes. Buster well, trying to give himself a little room to punch here, and he can finish this fight. He's tired, too, because yeah. he's been doing an awful lot of work in there. He throws a lot of punches for a heavyweight, a lot of punches. Rights and lefts in the team, and the pressure's on inside 30 seconds. McDowell holding on, Mathis keeping the pressure on. Yeah, both guys are tired right now, and, and they should be because but there's Buster. He's Huge round for that arcing right hand. Oh. McDowell, to his credit, continues to try to fight. He's about done. Oh. That'll be doing for round number four. Big round for Buster Mathis Jr. Wow, the crowd really coming to life after a, a, an explosive fourth round by M Buster Mathis Jr. Nelson Hernandez uh, doing everything in his power to revive his fighter in between rounds four and five here, but... Uh, and there's not much he can do at no. this stage. Round no, number five, this is Terry. Action round number four, Bob. Excellent right hand here by Buster that, that drops McDowell, but it was an accumulation oh. of a massive beating right there. It, he goes, but arcing right hand, but th there was 50 punches before that. And here we see Buster trying to finish McDowell. Mills Lane is going to, as we take more action here. That was at the end of round number four. Mills Lane is going to make sure that the tape that we mentioned at the end of round number four is taken care of. The ice man. Uh, are you going to pull it or what? Are you going to fight for me? You're not fighting. Okay, let's, let's go. go. You're not fighting. You, your sister's out there. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Round number five as we uh, see Buster go right back to work. And I think Mills Lane will probably not let this one go too much. The mouth is open. Oh, it's nice right yep. hand by McDowell. McDowell's you know, showing a lot of heart here, but just know, taking a pounding. The, the physical pounding that he's taking there, his legs have betrayed him, and yeah. he's going to be hard pressed to last through this round. The hands are down by the waist. There's no, there's no mustard on those punches whatsoever. Well, Big right hand, rock slide, McDowell. The Ice Man looking for a place to land. It looks like. Big shots. Big right hand of the oh, body oh. by Buster. Buster's yeah. just doing it. Number inside. McDowell trying to punch his round. That's it. That'll do it. Mills Lane has seen enough. About 45 seconds into round number five. Buster Mathis Jr. retains his USBA heavyweight championship with a fifth round stoppage of Lyle Iceman McDowell. He'll up his professional mark to 16 0 with only his fourth professional knockout. A very impressive performance here at Caesars Tahoe. Buster Mathis Jr., as we mentioned, not a body beautiful by any means, but Buster Mathis Jr. certainly doing the job on Lyle 
Iceman McDowell. <laughs> Why? Thank you, man. They come over and uh, embrace each other on a terrific effort by the champion. Here comes the final shots landed by Buster Mathis Jr. As you see, McDowell just holding on on pure grit right now. The overhand right. Mills Lane, the incomparable Mills Lane, stepping in and stopping it. Here's another angle on this uh, onslaught by Buster Mathis Jr. Mills Lane after that right hand. Bob Principe has the official stopping. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a TKO in 46 seconds in the fifth round. And winner, and still champion, Buster Mathis Jr. Very impressive performance. Buster Mathis Jr. going to 16 and 0 and continuing to uh, climb the ranks in the heavyweight division. And Lau, the Iceman McDowell, will head back to Milwaukee, Wisconsin with his first loss in over two years. Very, very impressive performance here at Caesars Tahoe on heavyweight explosion, and that was an explosive effort by Buster Mathis Jr. Bob Spagnola has the victor. Buster Mathis Jr.'s first defense of his USBA heavyweight title. How you feel, Buss? Uh, I feel wonderful. You know, I train hard. You know, I stay focused. You know, I got that ready bowl thing out of my mind. You know, I'm ready to stay uh, uh, focused on my um, boxing career and be champion of the world, making a lot of money. Well, that, that's the name of the game in this business. Listen, you know, McDowell came out southpaw up here at 6,700 feet. You had a lot of adversity to deal with in this thing. Were you worried about any of it? Uh, no, because I trained too hard to uh, I'll overcome that. You know, I was up here for two weeks and adjusted to the uh, uh, altitude. I got some sparring partners that uh, were softpaw, and uh, I trained, and I uh, and, uh, ran hard, and, uh, and I was prepared for this. That was an excellent performance. What do you guys think? Uh, what, what, do you have anything in mind for next, or are you just going to enjoy this victory and sit down with your promoter, Cedric Kushner? Uh, you know, I think Cedric Kushner is probably one of the best promoters in the world. You know, I like to say Cedric Kushner's production is number one. Just remember that. And, um, you know, I'm here to fight. For, I, I, when I come in the ring, I represent Cedric Kushner, my trainers, my father, myself, my family. And when I fight, I perform for myself plus for them. And so that's why, I, that's why I'm here in the first place. That's where I am, you know, because all those people is, is um, behind me and supporting me and everything. And uh, I'm, re I'm just ready to go. All right. Hey, listen, excellent performance. Your finest is a pro as far as I'm concerned. Back to you at ringside. Congratulations, Thank Buster. You. Thank you, Bob. And without question, there is the USBA title belt uh, going to be around the waist as we get in the action there. The last punch of the fight, which Mills Lane said uh, enough step, is enough, step. he stepped in, as we said, 45 seconds into round number five. And Buster Mathis Jr. coming on big time in rounds two, three, four, and five to retain his title belt and remain undefeated at 16 and 0, and only his fourth knockout. So. Certainly a lot of people didn't think that uh, he has the punch out power to uh, make a mark in heavyweight division, but certainly it was a lot of punches tonight that made the difference in this bout.